let's talk about BF16 encoding. One thing that people don't realize about modern GPUs is how much their peak performance is tied to the precision of the mathematics you're doing. If you're doing scientific computing and need 64-bit precision, things are going to be much slower than if you're just doing 32-bit precision. If you can remove your precision entirely to the point where you're actually losing information about your mathematics, you can achieve extremely high speeds. Many of these videos will be about how fast you can make your models if you're willing to throw away some of this precision. Now, let's review a bit what this actually means. When we talk about something having 64-bit precision, or FT64, the standard form is to think about it as having one signed bit, 11 bits assigned to the exponent, and 52 bits assigned to the fraction. This gives us relatively precise precision about the actual number that we're talking about. When we go down to FT32, we end up with 8 bits for our exponent and 23 bits for our fraction, in addition to 1 bit for our sign. If you remember your early computer science classes, you know that this corresponds to assigning 1 bit to it being plus or minus, 8 bits for roughly the scale of the number, and the rest of the bits for the actual fractional part. Historically, these fractional bits were known as the mantissa, and we'll see the notation M when we talk about them in practice. Now, in the standard CPU, it's a bit harder to actually do lower precision than 32, but on a GPU for machine learning, there has been a lot of exploration into 16-bit precision. There are two methods that people utilize. The standard one, which goes by the name FP16, has 5 bits for the exponent and 10 bits for the mantissa. This assigns many of the bits to actually precisely giving you the number, but relatively few bits for giving the scale. An alternative approach, known as BF16, which stands for Brain Float 16 because it was pioneered by Google Brain, assigns 8 bits to the exponent and 7 bits to the fractions. This gives us less precision in actually getting the number right, but more in actually producing its scale. Now, it's not that one of these methods is faster than the other. We can see that on an A100, they both have the same peak throughput. The difference is, is that brain float is better at representing the rough scale of the numbers, while FP16 is better at representing the numbers themselves. The upside of this is that for neural network models, where some of your parameters may be extremely different in scale than the others, you'll have less problems using something like BF16 than FP16. By allocating more of the few bits we have actually available to the scale, we can actually train in a more stable manner. Generally, in most large-scale trainings, people use BF16 as the preferred format for learning these models, although both are still widely used in practice and worth knowing.